Exocytosis is the process of releasing substances into the bloodstream. And that's not the, the most clear picture I could present. So let me try to re-articulate that. Exocytosis either releases contents from inside the cell or actual, actually places protein channels within the membrane of cells. So we're going to look at both of those examples. But it's about releasing contents from the cell interior that are bound within structures known as secretory vesicles and either releasing them out to the extracellular fluid and hence the blood plasma or releasing them to the cell membrane where protein channels become embedded within the plasma membrane of that cell. This is relevant with the release of neurotransmitters, the release of hormones, uptake of glucose, and release of water from the cells of the collecting duct in the nephrons of the kidneys, among other places. So we're going to focus on this. Okay, so let's start off by looking at just a general cell. The blue, large blue circle is the plasma membrane of a cell. The red circle is representing a structure within many cells, if not all cells, known as a secretory vesicle. And secretory vesicles contain some sort of signaling molecules. It could be a hormone like insulin. It could be neurotransmitters within a nerve cell. Secretory vesicles within nerve cells have a specialized na name known as synaptic vesicles, but they serve the exact same function. That is to say, they are holding on to some sort of signaling molecule. And then that signaling molecule, when given the cue, is going to be released into the extracellular fluid, or like I said earlier, maybe just embedding proteins within the plasma membrane. Now the stimulus for the release of these signaling molecules within the secretory vesicles is the influx of calcium. Now I wanna back up and say exactly what exocytosis is. Exocytosis is the release of these green signaling molecules within this cell to the extracellular fluid. And calcium tends to be the stimulus that causes exocytosis in many cells, though not all cells. So one thing I'm not showing here is what is facilitating the influx of calcium. Now, this channel right here, even though it's not showing a gate, is a gated channel. Once that gated channel opens up, we're going to get calcium moving down its electrochemical gradients into the cell. And then for some unknown reason, at least to me, Calcium is going to induce this process of exocytosis, which will follow in the subsequent images. But the opening of that gate tends to be a change in voltage. That is to say, this brown protein channel is a voltage-gated channel, which I oftentimes reference as voltage-sensitive channel. The change in voltage of this cell is going to open up this channel permitting the influx of calcium. And we covered that in the most previous video on types of gated channels, ligand gated, mechanically gated, and voltage gated channels. Like I alluded to, once calcium moves into the cell, it translocates that secretory vesicle. And I know I still have secretory vesicle written right here, and that's kind of looks like this is now the secretory vesicle. But to be clear, this right here is the secretory vesicle. And calcium, the influx of calcium, facilitates the translocation of that vesicle to the periphery of the cell, where it's starting, will, where it will start to bind with the plasma membrane. Translocation is just crossing the cytosol or the intracellular fluid and moving off to the periphery where the plasma membrane is. Once it comes in contact with the plasma membrane, it releases its contents. And this actually is exocytosis, the release of the contents from the cell into the extracellular fluid. So the steps were opening up a voltage-gated calcium channel, influx of calcium, calcium pushes the secretory vesicle to the plasma membrane, where the membrane of the secretory vesicle fuses with the phospholipid bilayer of the overall cell. And in doing so, there we get the release 
of the signaling molecule into the extracellular fluid. This is exactly how neurotransmitters are released from neurons, which are nerve cells. It's also how insulin, insulin is released from pancreatic beta cells. Beta cells are specialized cells within the pancreas located in a region known as the islets of Langerhorn. And these beta cells store and release insulin. Insulin is a hormone that regulates blood glucose levels. And insulin acts upon cells of skeletal muscle, adipocytes, which are fat cells, and myocardial cells, facilitating glucose uptake. So let's just focus on skeletal muscle. It will, that is to say, insulin downstream will cause glucose uptake into skeletal muscle cells. Once again, glucose uptake is the movement of glucose from the blood plasma into body cells. And, and in this case, into skeletal muscle cells. This right here, if this were insulin being released, this is not the skeletal muscle cell. This would represent the pancreatic beta cell. This cell would represent the skeletal muscle cell. In red, we have the secretory vesicle. And instead of having a signaling molecule or a bunch of signaling molecules confined within the secretory vesicle, what we have are glucose channels. Here's one glucose channel. Here's another glucose channel. Another one. Another one. And these are what are known as GLUT4 channels. There's a number of different types of glucose channels, but these are GLUT4 channels that we, we would find in skeletal muscle. They allow glucose to move from the blood plasma into the skeletal muscle. But that only occurs when those GLUT4 channels are actually embedded on the periphery of the cell within the phospholipid bilayer of this skeletal muscle cell. So what happens when insulin, which is released upstream from the pancreatic beta cells, which I showed in the previous picture, when insulin is released, flows through the blood and gets to these skeletal muscle cells, insulin binds somewhere to its receptor on the plasma membrane and initiates a whole cascade of enzymatic steps or events, which eventually translocates this secretory vesicle with its GLUT4 channels into the plasma membrane. And it's going to look something like this. So now we have those GLUT4 channels on the periphery of the cell. Those GLUT4 channels are open and will allow glucose to move from the blood plasma into this cell. Once again, the movement of glucose from the blood plasma into cells is known as glucose uptake. And that is initiated, that is to say the implantation or translocation of these GLUT4 channels into the periphery of the cell is initiated by the binding of insulin to this secretory vesicle. Excuse me from the binding of insulin to the insulin receptor on the plasma membrane. And once again, this is saying secretory vesicle. This whole blue circle is not the secretory vesicle. The whole blue circle is a skeletal muscle cell or some other type of cell. The red part of the plasma membrane is a remnant of the secretory vesicle that fused with the plasma membrane. So this would facilitate glucose uptake. Glucose uptake in many cells, specifically skeletal muscle, adipocytes, and myocardial cells, is mediated by insulin. But the translocation of these GLUT4 channels into the membrane can also be non-insulin dependent. And the factor that causes the translocation of GLUT4 channels when insulin is not present is exercise. And think about that. If we do not have, if we have high blood glucose levels and not all of it is moving into our secretory vesicles, 
it's going to go into our adipocytes and those are going to increase in size and that's how we gain weight. But we can facilitate the movement of insulin into skeletal muscle cells merely by exercising. Exercising is causing this translocation of the GLUT4 channels from the interior of the cell to the periphery, which is somewhat of a process of exocytosis. It is not releasing contents into the extracellular fluid, but all the other steps are somewhat the same. There's no calcium involved, but there was a secretory vesicle that translocated to fuse with the plasma membrane. And that is exocytosis. <laughs>